Uh, Super Indie is coming up here on June 13th, and why not just just talk to as many people as we can from the tournament. We've talked to so many, including the Super Indie champion entering that tournament, Andrew Palace, here on this show. And, and so many people, was like Super Hentai, we've talked about back on the Wrestling Mayhem show, but I'm uh, uh, real happy to have back on this show uh he, he, we've, we had him years ago back when he was up here uh, uh suplex in uh, uh samoa joe in, in, in an iwc ring he is ray death row currently coming to us from texas uh he has relocated and and great to see that you're doing awesome awesome things down there how you doing ray i'm doing great guys thanks for having me on Awesome. So, first of all, like I said, I, I saw you coming up uh, uh, up here as a, a part of the Cleveland Mafia. We talked about when you were on all those ages ago about uh, being in Pittsburgh and and gaining the respect of people. Uh, 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 being wearing the Browns colors <laughs> had to have been tough. Uh, but you've been in Texas, and Eamon is very familiar with what you've been doing. Uh, how has that transition been for you? Uh, coming to Texas has been the best thing for me, both uh, for my life and my career. Uh, it's really opened up a lot of doors for me that, uh, I didn't think it would, um, you know, just, just the people I've met and, uh, you know, the friends I've made have been awesome. Uh, the crowds have, have instantly taken to me, you know, the, the preparation I had up North, um, you know, brought a style with me down to Texas that not many people are familiar with down here. Mm -hmm. So I hit, I hit the Texas indie scene like a hurricane. Um, you know, they instantly wanted to see me against the top guys in Texas and the top guys in the region. Um, and, uh, you know, I was, I was on a roll for a while. Um, you know, had a, I, I'm sure you guys heard had a, had a little bit of a bump in the road last year. Uh, mm, yeah. and, and, um, you know, but I'm, I'm back on track and, and, and running people over. Um, so there we are. Awesome. And I know you've had some other, uh, familiar faces come and join. I know John McChesney did a tour down there a little bit. Yeah, uh, John McChesney's come down, um, and somebody that you guys are very, very familiar with. Uh, John McChesney's actually done two tours down here. He's wrestled in NWA Houston, uh, which is uh, a company that I'm very familiar with. It's now uh, part of, it's left the NWA, it's now in Lone Star Championship Wrestling. And uh, he's wrestled at Branded Outlaw Wrestling, which is uh, um, kind of my, one, one of the two home promotions that I have down here, both Inspire Pro um, you know, branded outlaw are very, very close to my heart as well as uh, Lone Star. Um, but there's another guy that you're really familiar with in Shane Taylor, yes. who moved down here, who followed me down here, moved down here, um, uh, last December. And he kind of has the same experience that I have. He's been steamrolling mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, that he gets in the ring with down here. So and he's a guy. Last I saw him, uh, is, you know, I've been working with the RWA up here, and he was uh, really on top again, just destroying people. Uh, the biggest monster I had seen in a long time in this area, and as that's, that's really kind of carried over down there in Texas. Oh, absolutely. He actually um, has been on the last three Ring of Honor shows that uh, that nice. came through Texas as nice. well. And, uh, you know, he did some, some dark match tryout work for, uh, for WWE as they came through. But, uh, I think he may have struck gold because there's a, uh, Eamon will tell you, and I don't know if you're familiar with the name because, because of Eamon, uh, there's a guy by the name of Keith Lee, who mm -hmm. is a Texas guy. Uh, you know, he, he is six foot three, 330 pounds. I said he was 350. He got really upset with me. Uh, so I think he's about 330 pounds. But he and Shane Taylor have recently formed a tag team. Uh, and for anybody that's not familiar, Shane Taylor is 6'1", 350, 360. Uh, he was an All-American uh, wrestler in college. Uh, Keith Lee, I think, played semi-pro football. Um, I mean, they, these are two massive massively strong, massively fast, massively powerful individuals. They formed a tag team and debuted in Ring of Honor over this week past weekend in Amarillo, Texas. Oh, uh, they're calling themselves the, they're calling themselves the Pretty Boy Killers. Uh, and they absolutely murdered people Friday night in Amarillo and Saturday night in Oklahoma City. Oh, uh, I expect to start seeing them tag together in Texas and then uh, more stuff with Ring of Honor and whoever is smart will sign that team immediately. They're not under contract with anybody yet, but it won't take long. I mean, those guys, like, seeing them together in the ring is like a force of nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it? Hopefully, I was going to say, hopefully maybe one day down the line, if, you know, this Ring of Honor streak continues, we may get them against uh, you and Hanson one day. Uh, you know, I've never been one to back down from a fight. 
Uh, I'm not going to start anytime soon. You line them up, and uh, mm-hmm. I'll throw them on their head and punch them in the mouth. We actually pulled up a match here uh, while you're talking about him uh, from Lone Star Wrestling, and yeah, he he definitely uh, uh, dwarfs you a little bit in, in the ring there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't I don't feel I don't feel like a, a small person next to most people. No, but 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 Keith and Shane and uh, you know my best friend Jack Dane down here, all three of them are are monstrous individuals. So uh, it's uh, you know it's it's interesting being the little guy of the group. <laughs> You're the little buddy for a change, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, you know, it's it's kind of uh, kind of motivating. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, uh, you know, uh, others. Well, actually, Inspire Pro is another one we talk about a lot. What's going on there? Obviously, with Eamon here on the show. Um, how has that been? It, it seems like a promotion that's really kind of caught fire over the last few years, uh, at least from a distance that I can tell. Uh, what, what do you what do you account for that and in, in your involvement in that? Um, I mean, Inspire Pro is, is like a couple other, um, Texas companies down here. Um, but, but they've kind of caught lightning in a bottle with what they're doing as far as with their talent and with their crowds. Uh, they're, they, they, they have this really cool venue in Austin. Um, you know, their crowds they have, they pack the house every time. I think the last two or three events were standing room only. Uh, I mean, and literally standing room only their, their fans lined up two or three people deep along the walls behind the chairs. I mean, there's no seats left in the building. Um, they were stealing seats from the lobby, from the other, from the other venues in the, in the same building and bringing them into, uh, to see, to see inspire. And there still wasn't enough people. The people are rabid about the events, uh, which just makes all of the wrestlers, you know, who are already passionate and already throw it all on the line. But if you get a really crazy rabid crowd, uh, that just brings everybody's intensity level up even that much higher. Uh, so I think that's something that's kind of special. You know what I mean? When you get a crowd, like, uh, when you watch WWE shows or, you know, that's a big part of the magic behind ring of honor, the crowds are so dedicated, so crazy, um, that, that just motivates us to go that much, to take it that much further. You know what I mean? To, to step, to fight that much harder. You know, people are going bonkers out of their seats and all of a sudden we find a little extra gear we didn't know we had. Um, you know, we thought we were put, we were redlining before, but man, that, that you feed off that energy. Like that's, uh, that's a real thing. And, and anybody who's never been in the middle of that ring doesn't really understand that, mm-hmm. but, uh, it's, it's a real, real thing. It looks like we're again looking at a match of you with uh, Chris Hero, uh, which I think is a bona fide uh, a dream match for a lot of indie, indie watchers out there. Um, and, and it seems like I, I, I see those kinds of matches happening all the time uh, uh, in that Fed. And then people coming up, it seems like they're making it are really, really impressive. Yeah, man. They, uh, you know, they bring in they bring in a lot of guys that that aren't necessarily local to texas mm-hmm. um you know and they've got and they've got guys like like me who and uh ach who are ring of honor guys who just happen to be from texas so it's kind of this nice meld of of, of local texas guys where there's a lot of talent that, that doesn't get enough recognition uh, nationwide mm-hmm. and then um you know some super indie guys that came in fun fact about that chris hero match uh, i actually wrestled that match with two broken ribs uh, i had broke them the night before at ring of honor and uh I was, I was texting, um, or in contact with the promoters and inspire and said, uh, earlier in the day, I said, I don't think I'll be able to wrestle. I couldn't even get out of my car, out of the seat in the car. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I, I, I found a way through it and Chris here, Chris and I went out and, and, and absolutely killed each other. Wow. And, and of course, Oh, go ahead. Uh, Eamon. No, I was just going to say definitely. And I think your, your run in inspire pro especially has been really, really spectacular. Uh, this past weekend, of all things, uh, I think your match with uh, Ricky Starks really stood out as one of the best of that night. Uh, uh, when that definitely comes out on DVD, I encourage uh, uh, people to check that out. And I know uh, uh, next month uh, you'll be going one-on-one with uh, uh, the American Psycho Lance Hoyt. So I'm sure that's going to be uh, uh, just as hard-hitting. Uh, I, you know, all respect to Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks is, is, is absolute dynamite, and he is, he is gold. Uh, but all respect to him. Uh, there's no way on earth that he hits as hard as Lance Hoyt does. Um, so that match is going to be 10 times as hard hitting as anything that Ricky and I did. Um, because Lance is worldwide known for being a tough, a tough son, you know, a tough customer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and, and he and I both kind of, uh, adhere to that smash mouth style of wrestling where we're going to line up 
and uh, throw everything we have at, at the other guy. So, and this is actually kind of a dream match for me because I've never wrestled Lance one on one. I've wrestled, you know, Hanson and I. Uh, War Machine took on Killer Elite Squad recently at Ring of Honor, and uh, you know, and I've I've mixed it up with 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 Lance in, uh, you know, a couple like a three way and you know a couple other tag team matches, um, but never a one on one encounter. So this is uh, this is going to be really exciting for me. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned Ring of Honor, and actually, we kind of borrowed the graphic for uh, the Great Destination America premiere this week uh, for you. Um, yeah, man. Really cool to see friends of the show like you, Dalton Castle, of course, making waves up here at IWC recently um, on 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 the Ring of Honor graphics uh, uh, for this new announcement. Uh, well, for, first, uh, how has that been? Uh, kind of getting. I know you popped up here a couple times uh, in, in Pittsburgh, and I was like, oh, "Hey, I remember that guy." And, uh, and and I'm here and down in San Antonio, and all of a sudden we we see you uh, kind of in a pretty serious tag team on our TVs. Uh, how did that develop, and, and how's it working with Hanson there? And 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 uh, and are you in competition for beards? <laughs> uh, well, uh, the competition is, is twofold. His is definitely a larger beard, while mine is is definitely a prettier beard. Uh, it's, it's definitely <laughs> I, I've got the better shape. He's got the you know the better size overall. Um, but he, uh, you know, uh, Ring of Honor has always been where I wanted to wrestle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, since I, you know, since early in my career, people said that, you know, Ring of Honor was, you know, I was tailor made for Ring of Honor. I, I, I need to go to Ring of Honor. And, um, I agree, you know, it, it was something that was always a goal of mine. And in, uh, 2013 in June, they were coming to do their first show in San Antonio. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, the promoters got a hold of me, um, and, I actually talked to, to a guy, you know, uh, one of one of the guys that uh, uh, that puts matches together, um, you know, had, I've known him forever, and he got a hold of me and said, "Hey, man, you're still wrestling?" And I'm and I said, uh, "Yeah, I've I've just been down and I just moved to Texas. I didn't retire, but that you know that goes to show you that, that a lot of a lot of the good stuff that happens in Texas just doesn't make the national, uh, you know, wrestling websites or anything like that. So they kind of didn't know where I was." Um, and I came in to wrestle Bobby fish in June of 2013. And when I walked through the doors, people who I had known for 10 years just did a double take because I looked like a different person. I had rededicated myself to training. Uh, I'd always trained really, really hard and I always had a reputation. I mean, um, sword, you can, you can, you can back me up on this. I've always had the reputation of being an insanely strong person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and throw and throwing anybody at any time from anywhere. However, I didn't, I never had that, you know, that, that commanding presence, that superhero look that, uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the guys and a lot of the TV products you, you need. Well, right. I, I had dedicated myself to, to training and dieting and doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I walked, when I walked in, I, I think my look turned some heads, you know, it, it looked like, uh, I was a different person and, um, you know, me and Bobby went out and killed each other. Like, you know, guys like me and him will do. We had a really good match, and then that led to another match. I wrestled Michael Elgin a couple months later, and then I wrestled Roderick Strong. And then uh, they asked, you know, they asked me to be a part of the the top prospect tournament. And Hanson and I ended up in the finals of the top pro top prospect tournament. We beat the tar out of each other. If you're noticing a trend, that's uh, seems to be how mo most of my matches go. They're not very pretty, but uh, you know, we we beat the hell out of each other. Um, and then, you know, we formed uh, War Machine shortly after. We we kind of both liked each other's style and, uh, you know, the, the looks fit and the style fit and the philosophies fit. And uh, we saw it seem to catch lightning in a bottle um, until my motorcycle wreck that almost killed me. Uh, so I was out for six months after that. And Hanson kept, you know, he kept on a roll and he did some really good things as a single. Uh, I came back. And, um, you know, right, right from the, the very first time I stepped back in the ring, uh, you know, he and I hadn't lost any chemistry and, uh, I'm what, what's probably scary to people is I've always been an intense guy. I've always been very aggressive in the ring. Uh, since I've been back from my accident, uh, I think that's been taken up several notches. Uh, and Lance Hoyt was actually a guy who told me that specifically. He said, man, you've always been, been one of the most intense people I've ever met, but whatever, whatever you went through with, with your accident and your recovery has changed something in you and, and, and you're downright scary now. Um, you know, so I brought that to ring of honor with Hanson and, and we've been murdering people, uh, you know, and we've been moving up the card. So we're, uh, we're just on a roll right now and trying to, trying to really, really, um, continue that. 
So, you know, we're, we're, we're both full time with ring of honor and you know, this is where we want to be. So we're going to make the most of it and run as hard as we can. Awesome. How, how much has it helped uh, getting a chance to get a word in edgewise without J rock with you? <laughs> I, I, I pulled up. You know, I pulled up some old Cleveland Mafia footage during that last talk because you're talking about your old look here uh, in IWC, one of your classic three ways with against uh, uh, Prohibition, Matt Cross, and the Gambinos here. And, I, and I'm just remembering J Rock, and, uh, and and he's a talker. Man, I, you know he 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 is definitely a talker. He's a guy that if you call him on the phone, you need to set aside 45 minutes to talk to him. Oh, we um, yeah yeah but, we we had him for about a half an hour. Let us know what he thought of Jake the Snake one time on the show. And I don't think we talked. Yeah. I think we let him go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, Ed, but the problem is he's money when he talks. Oh, so yeah. you don't really even want to. You don't even really want to interrupt him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I learned. I learned so much from from J Rock when uh, when we tag team when we team together. Um, so you know, I mean, that experience really helped me as a tag team wrestler. Changed the way I looked at tag team wrestler because before that I was really prim- primarily a singles wrestler and only wanted to be a singles wrestler. Um, and I kind of fell in love with tag team wrestling through working with J Rock. So, you know, a lot of my later success with the Path of Resistance with Jack Stain and with uh, War Machine with Hanson, I, I owe directly to J-Rock. Um, you know, and to be completely honest, I'm not really that big of a talker. So I, I would prefer, much prefer to do, you know, you don't really see me cutting a lot of promos. You don't really see me, even when I do cut promos, it's pretty much short, sweet, and to the point. Um, you know, I, I rarely have much to say. I'd much prefer to, you know, do my as 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 cheesy as it is do my talking in the ring you know come on out and uh, line up in front of me and we'll see we'll see what you really have to say uh because you can say anything you want but uh you if you want to back it up you got to do it you got to do it in the ring where it counts that's right uh, we mentioned a little bit before I get to super into here, uh, though we definitely want to. Uh, so, so Ring of Honor, the big announcements you guys are going to be on Wednesday nights, uh, are preceding actually TNA uh, Impact Wrestling, another IWC favorite, uh, DJZ on that show as well. Uh, but uh, yep. uh, how how is that uh, kind of you know being being a part of something the Ring of Honor that's already got quasi national syndication? I know there's a lot of markets that was kind of missing, but now really filling in the gaps and and in prime time even on a uh, on a cable network here. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. It's 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 just awesome. Like uh, you know, for us, it's an opportunity to showcase ourselves in a way that you know, on a platform that we've never had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is you know, uh, for all intents and purposes, prime time national TV. You know, it's 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 a major cable network that's carried in. I, I don't know, I think they said 57 million homes or 67 million homes, something like that. Whereas, you know, the Sinclair Broadcasting, uh, we're, which we're staying on, we're not, we're not losing all of those syndicated shows. We're, we're just adding, um, show, you know, we're adding the show on, uh, on Destination America. So you, you can, if you, if you watch on the syndicated shows, you can, you can see that, that show first on the syndicated shows. And then you can see, and then we'll just we're we're playing that show as well on Wednesday on that De- uh, Destination America. So this is still the same show that we're that we're um, producing for Sinclair Broadcasting. We're just we're just additionally airing it on Destination America. So for us, this just broadens our our footprint in a, in a way that uh, I don't think a lot of people expected or dreamed that would be possible uh, at this point in Ring of Honor's career. Mm-hmm. So this is a huge step up in exposure. It's a huge step up in 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 reach. Um, you know, and it's going to bring with it everything, you know, all that attention, all that, uh, all that spotlight and, and really, you know, I, I really think that we can open a lot of eyes and really, really open some doors for uh, possibilities that, that we're not even seeing yet. Mm-hmm. I know even locally here in Pittsburgh, I, I talked with somebody at the, the, my Pittsburgh channel, uh, the, my PG, my, well, my network, I guess is the general network, uh, uh out there, but, uh, it, but it, like even locally on that side, they're very happy with the numbers. Uh, the show has been doing well, at least in this market and, and in the scene, this expansion. Is, is pretty good um and it's it's really interesting I, i'm glad to see that the show has has really kind of found its voice uh at, you know after a while after the change from uh, uh hd nets version of it and uh it's, it's become a really it, it, i'm hearing word that after this uh, with viewership and everything ring of honor may officially become the number two promotion uh yeah i don't see i don't see there's any reason why that that can't happen and depending on who you talk to you know what i mean it depends on how you measure it and mm-hmm. and all that fun stuff mm-hmm. you know i firmly believe that it's the best wrestling on the planet mm-hmm. uh we don't have the numbers or the dollars that some of the other companies do but uh go ahead and stack our cards up line uh you know match for match against any company on the on the planet and uh you're going to come up in favor of ring of honor every single time 
Certainly, certainly. Well, the big thing uh, coming up next week, uh, July 13th, as we mentioned, Super Indy 14, uh, one of the longest running tournaments here, uh, and, and big names. Uh, the, 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 the list of people uh, that have been uh, in this is a who's who of wrestling, uh, you know, from AJ Styles and CM Punk to to uh, you with Ray, Ray Rowe <laughs> this year. Uh, of course, now, now you now this is interesting. So you have actually never competed, I understand, for the Super Indy title, let alone the tournament. Is that right? Uh, yeah, this is actually my first opportunity in any facet of the Super Indy uh, title. Uh, I've never been in the tournament, and I've never held that um, held that belt or even competed for the belt. Uh, I've held the IWC heavyweight belt. I've held the tag team titles, but I've never uh, never been in a matchup for the uh, Super Indy title. So this is a really big thing. I mean, I could be a Triple Crown winner uh, as of Saturday night. So. You know, and I, I, I've i recently had success in Cleveland at AIW where uh, I swept the table at the JT Lightning in- Invitational Tournament. Uh, you know, I went 4-0 and over over two days. So uh, I've been a tournament wrestler my whole life, uh, you know, with amateur wrestling. Excuse me, amateur wrestling and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm used to wrestling multiple times in a day. Uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. You know, I, I think this is something that uh, this is a talent that I have that a lot of guys don't have. It's not normal for them to compete more than once in a day. But my entire amateur career was spent in tournaments. Mm-hmm. So this is something is this is a facet that I'm very, very, very comfortable with. And, uh, you know, I, I get better as time goes on. As more people get tired, I get stronger. So it works out for me. Uh, and of course, uh, looking at the playing field here, uh, it looks like uh, your, your first round is going to begin uh, against Joe Rosa, of course, uh, making waves here over the last year, the VIP. Uh, what do you think about your competition kind of shaping, shaping up? And is there anybody else from the tournament that you're hopefully looking forward to face or you think may also stick out uh, in this tournament? Um, a guy that I would like to wrestle, um, you know, I'll talk about Rosa in a second because we're for sure going to wrestle him. Uh, a guy that I would really like to wrestle is Cedric Alexander. Um, he and I, you know, obviously know each other from Ring of Honor. We've never been in the ring together. Uh, so I'm really uh, hoping that maybe the brackets line up that way. You know, an Alexander Royal Finals would be fun. I don't know how the, the brackets look lined up. Um, so I don't know if it'd be first round, second round, third round, whatever. Um, but I, I'd, I'd like to see that matchup. Um, you know, other than that, uh, I'd, I'd love to, uh, I've known, uh, super anti for, you know, my entire career, literally my entire career. Um, so any chance to get in the ring with him is, is a good, you know, good hard fought battle. I'd, I'd love to, love to, love to, to cross swords with, with hentai again. Um, anybody else, man, it's, it's, it's a luck of the draw, you know, whoever, wherever the cards shake out, that's, uh, that's who I want to fight. Um, Joe Rosa, I've known since the very first day he stepped in a wrestling ring. Um, you know, I, uh, I knew him when he was first starting in Firestorm Pro in Cleveland back, you know, back before I moved to Texas. Um, he's a kid that uh, I saw a lot of potential in. And uh, seems like he's been making some waves uh, since I've been gone, uh, especially over the last 18 months. So, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if he's the same, you know, the same Joe Rosa that I that I knew four or five years ago, or if he's got more stuff up his sleeve. And, uh, you know, he knows exactly who I am. And um, it'll be fun. It'll, uh, <laughs> it'll kind of be a throwback to, uh, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, back in Cleveland, but uh, it's uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. You know, I want to see I want to see what he's got. You know, people are talking about him. People are you know, there's a little buzz about him. Man, uh, that 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 just amps me up. So I want to I want to see what he's got. Awesome. Uh, so uh, since we haven't had you on this show, we have a, a little bit of a, a, a few standard questions we like to end off with. Well, first of all, what are you watching? I guess you're watching Ring of Honor, right? But is there anything else kind of getting your attention out there? Uh, as far as wrestling, yeah, uh, I try to watch as much new Japan pro wrestling as I can. Nice. Um, new Japan is over the last couple of years have absolutely been killing it. Uh, I mean, they, they just have like, uh, you know, between new Japan and ring of honor, they have the best wrestlers on the planet. Um, you know, and, and it's evidenced by the guys who have left those two companies and what they've done, done in WWE. You know, and how quickly they've some of those guys have risen. You know, over the last five six years, uh, some of the biggest hottest names in WWE have been alumni from New Japan and Rest and uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, so I've been watching that 
primarily. Um, you know, I, I, I watch a lot of uh, older stuff as well. Um, you know, I love I love classics like uh, like Stan Hansen. I'm a huge fan of the Road Warriors and the Steiner Brothers. Um, so, you know, I, I, I try to kind of stay versatile, you know, see what's out there now, but uh, also watch uh, what, you know, make sure I'm grounded in the past and watch some stuff like that. Awesome. Awesome. So, and the other thing we like to ask is, uh, what's the best and the worst thing about uh, uh, doing indie wrestling all, all these years? Um, the best thing about it is, you know, the people that I've met through throughout the years. Uh, you know, I've met definitely the closest friends, um, you know, guys that I legitimately consider my family now, um, you know, just as, just as much as any, as any blood relations, uh, through wrestling. And I wouldn't have met these guys without indie wrestling. Um, you know, uh, Shane Taylor, Jax Dane, um, you know, just to name two right off the top of my head. Uh, and, and you know, and the, and that list is, man, it, you know, John McChesney, J rock guys like that, who just, they've changed my life in so many ways. Uh, so that's definitely unquestionably the best thing about it. You know, the, 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 the friendships you, you make and, you know, the brotherhood you experience, uh, when, it, when it's done right, it's just, it, you can't beat it. The worst thing, I think, worst thing is twofold. The worst thing first off is, um, time away from family. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many birthdays, weddings, uh, special dinners, you know, um, graduations, all that stuff that I've missed, um, and will continue to miss as I do this more and more and more. Um, you know, because wrestling is all that I do now I, I'm gone. I'm on the road every single weekend. Uh, so if there's any family event over the weekend, I'm, I, I can't, I can't be there. Um, because if I don't wrestle, I don't eat, you know, this is how I support myself. This is how I pay all my bills this is how I make my living. Uh, you know, and I'm literally living my dream. So it's, it's, that is the best and worst thing about wrestling is that I'm gone and I get to travel and I get to see and do all these amazing things, but I get to, I have to sacrifice time with loved ones, uh, as, as a result of that. Um, however, the other, the other worst thing about indie wrestling is the fact that our business over the last 10 years has become polluted by people who have no business in the wrestling ring. Guys who should have stayed in the, in the stands, guys who should have stayed, you know, behind the keyboards at their, at, at the computer in their mom's basement are now able to buy a pair of boots and get into wrestling rings because promoters, a lot of promoters across the country will use anybody. It says, Hey, my name is Billy Bob. I'm a wrestler. Um, and as proud as I am, and as much as I love professional wrestling, I hate that aspect of, of the Indies. Um, there's no governing body. There's no qualifications. Anybody, it seems like can buy a pair of boots or, you know, uh, go to hot topic and get some, get some, uh, get some half-assed gear and get booked on shows. And that takes, it does two things. It takes jobs from guys like me who are trying to do this to support to support ourselves, you know, professionals who are traveling, who are on TV, who have a contract and who are, who are traveling, uh, to, to support myself and, and our families that takes money away because it, and it lessens, uh, it, it lessens the ability to make money in this business because if guys will wrestle for hot dogs, why would a promoter pay for legitimate talent? You know, yeah. the other thing it does is that, um, you know, I meet people, and as proud as I am of wrestling, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is not usually when I meet someone, hey, I'm, you know, I'm Ray, I'm a professional wrestler. I just introduce myself and that's, that's all there is. Um, you know, and it's not till either later in the conversation or somebody else brings it up that, that wrestling comes up because invariably there's one of these backyard, barely out of the backyard guys. Oh, hey, my cousin, you know, my cousin Billy Joe does that. I said, no, nah, whatever your cousin Billy Joe does, it it's not what I do. Um, you know, I I I'm a, I'm a professional wrestler. I get paid for this. This is all I do. You know, when was the last time you saw Billy Joe on TV? When was the last time he took a plane to to go to a show? You know, um, that's not to say that there aren't great independent guys, truly independent guys that aren't on TV that aren't aren't flying. But come on now, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if if you look like. If, if the, if the guy in the third row thinks he can beat you up or, you know, you look like you couldn't wrestle your way out of a wet paper bag, hang them up, go back in the seats. Uh, you can do more to love the business by buying a ticket and supporting real wrestlers. 
Awesome. Sorry. Awesome. End, okay. end, end, of, end of rant. It's definitely something that I get back. <laughs> no, about, so uh, I apologize about that. It's not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. Was there a good in there? I'm sorry. I was, I was trying to help somebody find the house. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, actually, we do. Uh, real quick, uh, uh, our, our guest has to go. But uh, uh, put, your, put the headphones on and, and, and snuggle up to that mic there. Uh, the promoter for uh, IWC, Justin Plummer, just, uh, just arrived. Oh, my God. Just in the back. You were, At least 15 minutes. You were in the backyard of my neighbors? I told you I was They have a dog. Pond. That's not right. Yeah, well, they don't anymore. <laughs> oh. uh, Plumber, we're on the line with Ray Rowe right now, and uh, he's got to go here in a, in a minute. Uh, do you have any quick questions for him uh, uh, pertaining to the Super Indy coming uh, up? I don't want to repeat anything you guys did. I just want to say, um, Ray, thanks for coming out. I know all the fans are super, super excited. Social media is a buzz. Uh, surprisingly, am I am I close enough to this Yeah, you're thing? good. You're all right. You're all right. Uh, Surprisingly, he was a last-minute ad. I, I had the bracket ready to go, and I'm thinking it's just missing something special, maybe a little bit of Ray Row, and there will do the trick. And wanted to change the the cruiserweight persona that the Super Indy title has taken upon itself, and uh, really get somebody in the mix. So I hope you're ready to go. I know you got the size advantage, and just want to let you know I'm pulling for you. Thank you, brother. Uh, I, I appreciate the ad. Um, you know, I, like I said, I've been. I've been in and around IWC. I know that I moved to Texas, so I'm not there as much as I can. But, uh, you know, I love coming to IWC. Every time I come to Pittsburgh, um, you know, I, I have people ask me, um, you know, when are you coming back to IWC? When are you coming back to IWC? Now I have an answer. You know, June 13th, Super Indy 14, come out and see me do what I do. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. There's, there's a, a marked size difference between myself and most of the other competitors in the, uh, uh, in the tournament. So I'm – interested to see how that plays out awesome well, well thanks again ray Rowe. check him out uh, i don't know if you're on this are you do you know are you on this week's premiere episode of ring of honor on uh, destination america uh, i i am not on, i am not on this week okay. um i believe okay. my i believe my episode uh uh we've we've filmed an episode that we'll we'll be airing in the next couple weeks i'm not sure if it's next week or the week after but uh, i know this week is uh the briscoes are in action and uh I think Moose is in action. I mean, this this week is action packed. From um, you know, some of the guys from from New Japan are in action. This is uh, this is going to be a really, really, really good episode. So definitely, definitely check it out. I'll, I'll be watching. I highly encourage everybody else to be watching as well. Awesome. Go check it out. And uh, where can people find you online? Uh, every all of my social media is Raymond X Row. So Twitter at Raymond X Row. Uh, Instagram at Raymond X row, Facebook backslash Raymond X row. Uh, I believe I've hit that 5,000, uh, friend follower or friend thing. So you're going to have to follow me on Facebook, but uh, I try to stay active, um, and, you know, really update all three pages. So, uh, you know, give me a shout out on, on, on social media. And, uh, you know, I try to, I try to interact with as many fans as I can. So thank you guys for the support. Thanks for having me on. And, uh, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks.